Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of God Sauce Turnbuckle, the wrestling video podcast here on YouTube and Daily Motion. I am currently working on an audio variation to kind of broaden the, uh, the audience of the actual podcast itself. Uh, but for the time being, we're sticking to the video format for the t uh, just for the time being. And this episode of God Sauce Turnbuckle is going to focus around uh, Monday Night Raw on June the 12th, 2017. And, uh, okay, they, they, they've officially, uh, well, though last week they officially had started their whole uh, promos and building towards the the pay-per-view called, once again, still wrapping my brain up around this, that pay-per-view is going to be called this Great Falls of Fire. Um, and they continue on with everything this week. Uh, with an episode that I would consider uh, pretty much... Uh, how would I really want to go with it? I, I, I do feel like a mixed bag in this one. I felt like the episode started off quite well. And then you had kind of a downturn. And then it picked back up again. Uh, so let's just go. Let's kind of go through everything here. Uh, they started off the show with Brock Lesnar calling out. Heyman comes out. He starts cutting a promo on Samoa Joe. And he's doing this in a completely different light than what he does for most of his promos. Most of his promos, he builds up everybody he builds him up builds him up builds him up and like to be like this great threat to brock lesnar and then you know brock goes out and wins or something in, the, in that sense this time around uh he is just putting down samoa joe like uh throwing insults his way every which way because of the attack from the week before uh and everything in that sense i even like the aspect that he had said that uh, after he and Brock had talked about it, if this was a bit where, you know, Paul had done something to him in the past, he kind of would have deserved it and Brock wouldn't have had a problem with it. Um, but since he didn't have a beef with Samoa Joe in the past, now Brock has a problem. So, uh, so he calls him a coward, everything in that sense. This does prompt Samoa Joe to come out and instead of just saying words with Brock Lesnar, he starts a big brawl with Brock Lesnar. So uh, as this brawl is happening in the ring, uh, Kurt Angle comes out with security to try to break them up. They get chucked around like they're nothing, um, as usual uh, in that case, uh, which prompts uh, out the entire law, Raw locker room. And, you know, and then they go through that whole aspect of both of them having a hard, like, uh, them having a hard time uh, keeping them separated before they finally do. Uh, you do get like a really good super kick in from Samoa Joe to Brock Lesnar in this one. Uh, this is a good brawl. This is a good brawl. I, I, I liked it. It was a very hot start to Monday Night Raw. And, you know, they were going up against the, um, they were going up against the NBA Finals. So you figure they were going to have to try to do something really big really quick and that was what their attempt was i think ratings wise that didn't really help them at all but um but it was what it was there uh but i thought it was a it was a really good start to monday night raw the brawl was the brawl was good um we had seen it kind of in that sense before with him and with brock lesnar and uh the undertaker years back uh, and they kind of rehash it again here. Uh, so after they come back from commercial break, Elias Sampson's in the ring and he starts singing again. Put, of course, putting down the town that he's in and how he wants to get out of Louisiana and everything in that sense. Good stuff from the drifter. I uh, I like Elias Sampson. Uh, in the sense of, like, if I was in the crowd, uh, this is the way I, I put it. It's like, if I'm in the crowd and he's supposed to be playing a heel and I going to boo that guy and the answer would be yes mainly uh, so that, uh, like to me that makes a good heel uh so i end up liking uh, i end up liking that so i'm liking his work at, the, at this point in time uh so hopefully they continue on with it he goes uh, uh this does go on until dean ambrose uh decides to uh you know interject himself and they have a match again uh elias sampson ends up getting the victory with the miz coming out and causing the distraction which allows elias sampson to get the uh neck breaker uh, that swinging neck breaker of his on um on dean ambrose and picks up the victory that uh in that way um a decent match here uh it kind of was what it was they're getting they're actually doing a lot with elias sampson right off the bat so i feel like they have something like they they feel like they have something in him and it should be an interesting way of going 
So uh, up next to talk about, actually, I'm going to talk about both of these right off the bat here uh, because we got another Gold Dust and R Truth promo from both of them. First of all, R Truth later in the show does start using different movie quotes and everything and what he's going for on his side. So he's not just sticking to kind of Sam, Sam Jackson or Pulp Fiction style uh, movie quotes and everything to go along with it. But both of these guys, they're great on these promos. I, like to the. To the extent that I don't mind, like, you know they need to go somewhere else with this. Though, then again, their build-up to actually being a team lasted, like, six months as well. So maybe they can drag this out for that long. Who knows how they're, how long they're going to drag this out for or anything in that sense. But the promos that they've been giving so far have been really good. You're kind of just waiting for when they're going to have it... Um, an on-camera on camera altercation again with uh, with everything, but the factor that they've been doing these retort promos and everything, uh, like you have Goldust in his classic promos and R Truth with his retort promos to go along with it, have been really good, and I've been enjoying that so far. So we're going into a backstage segment where oh, a couple backstage segments actually, where Miz runs into Kurt Angle. So uh, Miz wants him to basically get rid of uh, Dean Ambrose for what he did last week and ruining the celebration. He even brings up the factor that Maurice is still mad at him over the grandfather clock bit and everything, which you see throughout the show. They're building the tension between Miz and Maurice. Like every time Miz goes in for that the typical kiss that he would go with with Maurice, she just kind of turns her head. It's it's good. It, it, it's good stuff, and they're building that tension up really well. Um, he says he should be suspended or fired or anything in that sense. Kurt's like, and he even brings up the aspect of it's like the only reason why this happened was because you had your little personal issues that were distracting you, and you saw Kurt's like, "What do you know about my personal issues?" So they're kind of bringing, they're subtly bringing Miz into that a little bit. Uh, not too much. Actually, that was the only reference to those, uh, to the text messages and Corey Graves stuff that they really went through this entire uh, entire episode. That was kind of the only mention of it. They don't go further into it in, um, in this episode of Raw. Uh, so Kurt basically says to, to the Miz to man up and basically get rid of him himself uh, in that case. Uh, and... It, it does, it, and it kind of can, and like I said, they're building the tension between Maurice and Miz as well to go along with it. And you see something a little bit later on in the show. Matter of fact, um, actually, I'll just talk about that later. I'll talk about that one later. I won't actually get into it right now. Uh, up next, the uh, up next though was uh, they're t continuing this deal with Cedric Alexander and Noam Dar. Uh, they had done this before when he was when before Cedric Alexander went out with injury and everything. This time around, he's kind of backstage with Noam Dar, like kind of saying he's just done. Like after this match, I'm done. I don't care. I don't want to deal with you or Alicia Fox anymore. We're we're done. I don't even care about the ex-girlfriend or anything to go along with it. And of course, Alicia Fox and Noam Dar are FaceTiming at that point. This brings Alicia Fox talking to. Uh, Cedric and they're kind of bragging on him. It's like Cedric's just like, I'm done, out, out, <laughs> I'm out of here. Uh, so some decent stuff there. This leads to their match with Noam Dar and Cedric Alexander, which was pretty much a one move match because Alicia Fox would not allow Noam Dar to get off the phone. They even bring it to the point that they put the phone up on the Titan Tron. Uh, uh, up top and you can hear her over the speakers throughout the entire time uh, going along with it so as soon as uh, even though you have uh, even though you have like her still screaming throughout the entire uh, bit and everything uh, Noam Dar puts down the, the cell phone and gets hit with a lumbar check right off the bat match over done uh, in that sense so uh, not too much to that afterwards. The kind of just a funny bit with what they're doing with Alicia Fox and Noam Dar uh, in that one. So we'll see what they do with Cedric Alexander next when they get him out of this program and going off to another one. Uh, so up next to talk about, there's a couple, couple video, a uh, couple video packages, or at least they showed this video package a couple times throughout the night. Uh, they were basically promoting. A Roman Reigns announcing what he's going to do at SummerSlam uh, thing. And he is, um, and like what he's going to do. He has an announcement on what he's going to do at SummerSlam and everything in that sense. 
even though Raw still has a pay-per-view before SummerSlam. So he's going to announce what he's doing at SummerSlam before Great Balls of Fire. Still a weird pay-per-view name. Uh, yeah. Uh, kind of weird on that one. Uh, though, I guess you can... Cut, with the way that they're promoting John Cena on SmackDown, on his comeback on July 4th, they announce him as a free agent. So it kind of uh, kind of gives that indication maybe next week he comes out and he announces he wants a match with John Cena at the, at that pay-per-view uh, and see where they go see where they go with it from there. It's, it's kind of weird like this like yeah, we're gonna announce the SummerSlam thing before our other pay-per-views done. so let's let's do that. No <laughs> uh, it, it was just a little bit weird. Though it'll be interesting to see what the announcement ends up actually being in the end. Um, up next was Bray Wyatt. He comes out. And uh, so he basically makes his intentions fully clear now. That he is going after Seth Rollins. He wants Seth Rollins uh, as, the, as being one of the guilty parties of him not getting a match with Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. So he's going to go after him full on first. He, of course, cuts a promo on Seth Rollins, everything to go along with it. This, of course, prompts out, uh, prompts Seth Rollins to come out and cut a promo on Bray Wyatt, which he ends up challenging him. And Bray kind of starts laughing. I was like, you don't want this fight. It's like, because you may be able to slay a king, but you cannot slay a god. And he does the bit where he disappears. And the Eater of Pins, as so many people are calling him now, um, reappears on the screen. So he disappears from the ring. The lights go out. And then he reappears on the screen, cuts the, uh, finishes off the promo. And yeah, basically was what it was uh, in that sense of it. Uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see where everything goes with this one. Um, is this just another way for Seth uh, for Bray Wyatt to eat another pin? Though looks strong at every every corner of of uh, doing it. I don't know. We'll see where they go with everything though, on this one. It'll be interesting to see if they just give him a win. It, it would. It would be interesting. It would be kind of shocking, uh, honestly. Uh, but yeah, we'll see where everything goes with that. Uh, up next was a uh, well a Hardy Boys interview. Uh, basically cutting a promo on the match for that night. They were kind of, uh, like in the terms of voice and everything, they're kind of getting rid of the broken thing for a little bit right now. Uh, but basic sta standard fare for promo for, you know, the, the two out of three falls match later in the evening. You got one from Sheamus and Cesaro a little bit later on in the show, right before the actual, uh, right before the main, uh, like a little bit before the main event uh, happened. So... Yeah, kind of standard fare on both sides. Uh, both of them cutting at least decent promos, hyping up the match, uh, saying what they're going to do and everything in that sense going into it. Uh, I thought it was pretty good, a pretty standard fare, but pretty good to go along with it. Up next, you had Apollo Crews going up against Kalisto once again. But this time around, like they have Apollo, uh, Apollo Crews and um, Titus O'Neil have uh, Akira Tozawa at ringside. So they're trying to incorporate this uh, Akira Tozawa into the Titus brand thing. So he's going to be like the first international superstar, but he's also going to be like one of the cru cruiserweight uh, guys in there. So they're incorporating cruiserweights with this Titus brand thing to go along with it. Uh, so Akira Tozawa is watching at ringside as Apollo Crews is going up against Kalisto. Uh, decent match. They have Apollo Crews go over in the end uh, cleanly this time. So like no uh, shenanigans or anything in that sense. As of course like Titus O'Neil is, you know, pitching Titus Brand to Akira Tozawa throughout the entire uh, throughout the entire match. Um, so after the match, this was great stuff by the way. Akira Tozawa. Uh, is even showing how, how good he is, just in terms of reactions uh, and, how he, uh, and how he is. Uh, so they're going in for that typical selfie, but they bring Akira Tozawa over the ring apron and bring him into the ring. They're celebrating with Akira Tozawa, and Tozawa's just like, what the... It's like, WTF, what's going on around, around me at the moment? And it's just... It, it was fun to look at it. It was kind of like how when Apollo Crews was initially getting uh, recruited by Ty, uh, Titus O'Neil to do the whole Titus brand thing. Uh, I thought it came off great uh, with Akira Tozawa in there because he, he was just giving us like, I don't really want to do this smile <laughs> uh, type thing. I thought it came off pretty good. 
So up next, you had Heath Slater and Rhino. Uh, they were backstage. They were just eating cheese and crackers as you typically would go, though we had not seen them much since they'd come over the Raw. Um, Miz comes in, and he offers only to Heath Slater, though, um, to be a part of Miz's entourage. So and, and throughout the so as he's pitching this to him to help him out like with Dean Ambrose and everything, Rhino keeps going. It's like he has a tag team partner already. That's all. That's it. Mm, no. <laughs> And done. So you're almost th thinking it's like, okay, maybe they're gonna do something with this, and maybe break up this team or something to go along with it. Um, but uh, it's like, so eventually, Miz is like, what do you want to be a part of this? And it's like, I would like a shot at the IC title. It's like, well, you join up with me, and I will consider having you have an IC title shot somewhere down the line somewhere down the line long way away and of course like you just see rhino fuming more and more i i'm i'm actually liking rhino during this um during this entire run that he's been doing because it looks like he's just having a lot of fun doing it and he basically again says it's like he has got a tag team partner already now go find one yourself and we'll have a tag match after i talk with uh kurt angle about it and as they leave he's just angrily eating the crackers to go along with it i thought it was good stuff i thought this was good stuff it led to something completely silly a little bit later on uh in the end so we'll see where every uh, so i'll talk about that in a little bit up next it was, uh, well, they had a big, they ended up having a big women's segment, which they ended up setting up a six-woman tag match with that had been going on at the house shows over the weekend. Uh, so Alexa Bliss comes out. She starts cutting a promo on, you know, beating Bailey, keeping the women's title, everything in that sense, and then gets interrupted by Nia Jax. And, of course, uh, she has small, like before Nia Jax had come out there, she had small amount of uh, disparaging things to say about Nia, and then of course butters up to her as she gets out there, and she completely blames Mickey James and Dana Brooke for getting in the way of the, their match and uh, preventing them from having a classic and everything in that sense, which of course prompts Mickey James and Dana Brooke to come out, which and then they start cutting a promo, basically outing. Alexa Bliss for what she had said backstage the week before. This brings out Emma, and this is kind of where it starts getting overcrowded a little bit. Um, Emma comes out, basically is like, nah, Spotlight needs to be on me now. Sasha Banks comes out, and at least get, and with Sasha, she comes out and gets actually a pretty good pop. So you're, I'm kind of thinking if they're keeping Sasha face, which for the longest time it was looking as if they were going to go... Uh, Sasha Banks going heel, and she'd be going up against Bailey around SummerSlam time. Uh, doesn't look like they're going to go that route now. Basically, with how they've been treating the Bailey character recently, which we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that one in a little bit. Um, and cut, comes out there, and I like how she goes. They're they're chanting for Sasha and everything. It's like, and Sasha's just like, yeah, uh, thank you guys, thank you guys. But can I talk to her for a moment? To try to shut shut down the crowd real quick, uh, and she comes out there, cuts a quick promo, and then basically starts a brawl with everybody, which led to the six woman tag, which was an all right match, uh, which was an all right match. Having uh, Sasha, Dana, and Mickey go over with Sasha uh, hat beating um, Emma with the bank statement. Alexa walks out like mid match as well, and just stands up on the rampway and uh, you know ditches her team to go along with it. Um, Segment was just overbooked. That, that's all it was. It was really overbooked. It, it, it started out kind of okay with, with how they were going with it. They were playing off of everything for the week before, and then they added Emma and Sasha out of nowhere for it. Uh, so it kind of became overbooked. The match, like I said before, was okay. Um, and after this, they play a video package for Finn Balor. Not really announcing anything, just showing off Finn Balor again. Because, again, he wasn't, wasn't on the show, like, in person. I think he's been over in Japan doing a promotional thing. So they're kind of just playing video packages and allowing... And it's like, reminder, he's, he's here. Kind of like with Roman Reigns, uh, because he wasn't on the show this week either. So they, they run a video package with it. So after this... You, you have the Bailey sit down interview. I don't know where to go. I, I, I honestly don't know what to think about this because there's good portions to this interview 
and there's bad portions to this interview. First of all, um, the beginning portion where she kind of explains why she didn't use the kendo stick or anything to go along with it, I thought was kind of kind of weak. Honestly, I felt like at the beginning of this promo, they should have had her be more disappointed in losing. That her like because they go a little bit later into it, which I thought was pretty good. Which I thought was pretty good is like talking about who she is and how she likes to do things her way and not necessarily do things the way other people necessarily want to do it, even though uh, her way can be considered weird or miscontrived or something to go along with it. I thought that was good. And if they continue on with that portion of the characteristic for Bailey. I think they're I think they're saving the character at that point in time. Uh, but the beginning of it, I like felt like she needed to be more disappointed in the factor that her own way wasn't good enough in winning at Extreme Rules uh, in, in that match with her and Alexa Bliss. Uh, so this brings us to the end. And, and it almost makes it feel like this is a rib or something to go along with it. But that because Bailey kind of does that whole bit where she just looks around like, okay, is this off? And can we end this with a hug type thing to Corey Graves? And of course, Corey's like reluctant, but uh, it's like, sure. And like that awkward hug at the end. And it was just, oh, it was, it, it was pretty hilarious with Corey Graves. It, it proves that it proves to him why he's really good because he's like, after the hug, he's like, I think I need a cigarette. And they just cut, <laughs> they just cut off. It was kind of, it almost felt like they left it in there for a gag. Just for a gag uh, to go along with it. I don't know if that's going to be like the full on, a full on switch with the Bailey character. Because otherwise it almost comes off kind of creepy. Not going to lie. Comes off kind of creepy uh, to go along with it. So, like I said, so I actually kind of laughed at that portion of it. But I don't know if that's going to be a full-on thing where it's like she needs a hug or something to go along with, with that. And it, you like give hugs at inopportune times or something to go along with it. I don't know if that's going to be part of her character now. If it is, bad. <laughs> it's, it's not going to work. It's going to be bad. That's going to be bad. That's why I'm saying this interview had a mix of good and bad to it. Because like I said, the whole aspect of her saying... That she wants to, like, you could definitely even tell it in her, in her voice as well. Uh, that she was more believable at that time. It's like she wants to do things her own way, everything in, in, in that sense. I thought that stuff was good. Uh, I would have preferred a little bit more disappointment, uh, in, or showing a little bit more disappointment at the beginning. And whatever they were doing there at the end, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But we have some good in there. And hopefully they focus in on that good. For the rest of the time instead of go, going off something really weird we'll see where they go with it but uh mix of good and bad with that interview so this brings us to the heath slater and rhino versus miz and his mystery partner oh wait mystery partner by that being a bear yep they brought back the bear suit uh and of course throughout the entire I, I thought this match was kind of good it, just in the sense of comedy um yeah slater, slater and rhino going over in the end uh, Miz is convinced that uh, the bear is Dean Ambrose the entire time. And of course, like last week, he beats up the bear and tries to expose him. It wasn't Ambrose. And then uh, the bear gets put back into the ring uh, in, in that sense. And they kind of, and as the referee is distracted with like Slater and Rhino and Miz, that they switch out and a new one comes in, which does reveal itself to be Dean Ambrose after he gives um, dirty deeds to Heath Slater, and then he uh, takes out, then he takes out Miz and puts Slater over to get the victory. Um, and, and again, like I said, there, I, I thought the comedy in the match was kind of good, but I don't necessarily know if I really want to see all that much of it. Like I do kind of want to see this storyline in, but though they are giving off some good stuff in there, I think there was some good stuff to this one. Up next was supposed to be Rich Swan going up against Neville. This is good stuff. I'm liking Neville a lot, uh, and it just goes off to say it's like, okay, I'm done with I'm done with Austin Aries now, and I'm going off to the next one. It looks like it's going to be Akira Tozawa. So what happens uh, in the in the match is that it was supposed to be a match. It ends up being a no contest because um, before 
Rich uh, Rich Swan gets into the gets into the ring, uh, or not before, but as he's still dancing and everything to go along with it. Uh, Neville attacks him, eventually puts him in the rings to start, just beats him down brutally, starts cutting a promo. Uh, of like everybody he's gone through he, he, saying like Jack Gallagher Austin Aries and when he goes to Richard Swan I like the fact that uh, he pl plays off he's a guy who uses full names instead of just saying Rich Swan he goes Richard Swan uh, to go along with it he, he's like putting more emphasis behind the name I liked it uh, then he starts cutting a promo talking about what he had seen with uh, Titus O'Neil, Akira Tozawa, and everything in that sense off of uh, saying like Titus O'Neil. Uh, Titus O'Neil said that Akira Tozawa would be the next cruiserweight champion, and it's like, and he was basically just warning Akira Tozawa about it. And I thought this came off really, really well, and I I ended out really enjoying this promo. Neville is freaking great. I like it. Uh, I like where they're going with this. So, we'll see where they continue on with that storyline down the line here. Up next was, actually, we'll talk about the Gallus and Anderson and Enzo and Cass match. So, before the match, Cass is uh, attacked again. And he even goes out there and says, the, um, he even, when he comes to, he says, it's like, one, it's like it was the hardest I was ever hit. One punch to the back of the head and I was out cold. Big show? So he's trying to accuse Big Show in, in this sense of everything. Also, in the background, though, uh, for the first time after one of the attacks, in the background, you see the revival. They're making not such a subtle uh, appearance on the show. There's like, they just walk by. It's like, eh. And they're gone. <laughs> uh, so they're, they're keeping that whole aspect of them being around uh, in the terms of when these are being talked about. Kind of to keep them, uh, people think it's like, yeah, it's them, it's them. Or it could be Cass, or it could be Big Show now. And then, it, or maybe they have something else with a go with it, with, uh, with Corey Graves and everything to go along with it. Um, and this time around, Cass is basically like, yeah, I'll go ahead and give it a try. I'm still going to give it a try, though. Everybody's trying to tell him, no, 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 don't do it. Um, they get out there. And, of course, that leads to Gallows and Anderson winning the match uh, pretty easily uh, in the end uh, with the Magic Killer. They, cont they continue on beating up Enzo after the match. This causes Big Show to come out uh, and help out uh, everything. As he's checking on Enzo, you have Cass who's kind of coming to again. And he sees this happening. And Cass just gives him, like, that death look at... Um, at uh at big show uh for like almost like bewilderment or something to go along with it uh so we'll see where they go off with everything here they do have a little bit some uh something backstage again with big show where enzo is kind of like saying give me peace of mind big show you didn't attack him did you and of course like big show gets angry at this and eventually calls um uh calls cast soft uh, before ending uh, ending everything uh, on, on that sense. So uh, we'll see where they go with it. They're kind of making this intertwining thing. You have the revival around all the time now, just kind of in the background. You have this potential that maybe it's Cass who's actually doing it. He's just faking these, uh, faking these injuries. And then, of course, there's a potential, which would probably be the worst choice, is that Big Show's actually the one doing it. Uh, to go along with everything. But we'll see where they go with it. Up next, they had a Samoa Joe promo. Like, uh, you had seen him at the beginning of the show. Now, like, right before the main event, he cuts a promo basically on Brock Lesnar and everything he's going to want to do at Great Balls of Fire. Again, I'm going to say it one more time, weird pay-per-view names. At least this one's weird and just not bad like this Tuesday in Texas. Yeah, that, that, that was a pay-per-view name. That was a pay-per-view name. Uh, but again, Samoa Joe cutting, uh, cutting another good. Like, he's that guy who can be intense at all times, but he can also come off as calm at all times to go along with it. So he has great intensity, but is also uh, completely calm in everything he's doing. I, I like the promo uh, that he cut on Brock Lesnar here. So this leads us to the main event of the night, which was the Hardys versus Sheamus and Cesaro for the tag team titles. This was a good match. 
this is a good two out of three falls match. Um, the first fall does come a little bit quick. Matter of fact, both falls come a little bit quick in the match. They kind of uh, go with uh, go with the that quick pinfall type st uh, style at the beginning where it comes a really really quickly in the like the first fall comes really 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 quick the second fall came kind of midway like in a normal portion of the match or something to go along with it it's that third fall like uh, the match itself was enjoyable the story that they built up going into the entire ma uh, ending of the match I thought was good with the ending being it's like now why did we do this style match because it ended in a double count out um, I, I get why they do the double count out because they want to continue on with the storyline and everything, but I feel like they could have gotten, they could have gotten there in a better way that, especially when you're ending the show as well, they could have gotten there a better way in the terms of like a beat down DQ or something to go along with it to finish off the show. Uh, something that kind of leaves you, uh, at least subtly fulfilled that yeah the storyline is going to continue on but this match didn't seem n for nothing when you end it with a double count out like that it just it, 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 it left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth on that one uh but otherwise i thought the match was good uh to go along with everything the first fall did come with sheamus bro kicking jeff hardy as he was trying to do his um his jump over like Sheamus in the corner and he gets caught with a with a bro kick. Uh, the second fall comes with Matt Hardy hitting a twist of fate and picking up the victory I believe on Cesaro uh, on that one. They even tease that the that potentially the um, that the titles were going to change hands because they had had Jeff hit the Swanton but Sheamus but Sheamus gets pulled out of the ring by Cesaro and everything and that did lead to the fit uh, to the finish. Of the match was like I said, I, I thought good match, bad finish, it, it just was what it was, uh, in that sense. So, with that being said, overall, I thought the show itself it, it had its good points to it and it had its bad points to it, uh, as well. I think that's almost overall on a weekly basis now, it has its good and it's bad, it's just not like just overly bad or overly good or anything in that sense. You can't. Like an average raw has, especially with the fact that it's three hours, um, has its good points to it, has its bad points to it. The Bray Wyatt stuff I thought was kind of weird. I, I mean, I like Bray Wyatt and everything in that sense, but this one was a little bit weird. But at least he's ha he's finally got like a clear cut path of who he's going after. It's not like is he going after Finn? Is he going after Samoa Joe? Is he going after Seth Rollins? No, he's just going after Seth Rollins at, at this point. Uh, but otherwise, a decent enough show, I guess. It, like I said, had its ups and its downs throughout the entire show. Uh, so we'll see where they continue going on, uh, going on with everything going into the next pay per view, which I'm going to try to reluctantly not say the name all that often just because of the fact that I've always got to say, yes, pay per view name is really weird. It being called Great Balls of Fire. I will, I'll try to avoid saying that too often. But uh, we'll see how, how that one even goes off on that one. Uh, but it is, it is kind of hilarious that they have to uh, continually promote a name for a pay-per-view like that on TV. It's kind of hilarious to watch everybody. Either, like some people, I, you even saw Samoa Joe kind of just have like, like a little smirk in his face. Like I'm really advertising a pay-per-view called Great Balls of Fire type, uh, type uh, look in his face to go along with it. Um, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how that, how that one fully goes off in the terms of little subtleties, uh, with the promotion of this next pay-per-view. So with that being said, I thank you guys for tuning in and I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out.